Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. So, what is SpaceX going to be doing with all of these rockets that they've landed and recovered? And have they achieved the goal of rocket reusability? This is your Space Pod for June 1st, 2016. So far, SpaceX has landed four Falcon 9 first stages, one at land and three at sea, and I wanted to give a rundown of the current status of all of those landed first stages and what all of their progress and eventual fates might be. The first recovered first stage, which was on the 20th flight of the Falcon 9, which flew on December 21st, 2015, is still at Cape Canaveral, Florida, going through a rigorous inspection process. The engines are being removed and inspected, and I'll bet they are seen if any individual components can be reused. What would the eventual fate of this booster be? It'll be put on display at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, and will remain as kind of a museum piece. The second Falcon 9 first stage that they recovered was on the 23rd flight of the Falcon 9, and was the first to land on the Autonomous Spaceport drone ship, which launched the CRS-8 mission on April 8th, 2016, and is also in the middle of of a rigorous inspection at the SpaceX flight processing facility at Cape Canaveral. This stage hopefully will be used again. So far, engineers hope that this stage could relaunch as soon as the end of this year. So it seems to me that missions like CRS, the Commercial Resupply Services Program, going to either low Earth orbit or even satellites going to medium Earth orbit, those type of missions would have probably the highest chances of success of recovering those stages without very much damage and relaunching those ones. And their more complicated recoveries of geosynchronous transfer orbit missions might not be able to be reused, and here's why. The stage on the 24th flight of the Falcon 9 that launched JCSAT-14 on May 6th 2016 was a geosynchronous transfer orbit mission, and the first of that mission type to land on the autonomous spaceport drone ship. However, this stage received a lot more damage during re-entry than the previous two landed stages, and SpaceX officials have determined it will not fly again. However, not wasting a good opportunity, this stage will be sent to McGregor, Texas, where it will be put through the toughest testing possible on individual components and full-up static fire tests, and they will try to push this stage as hard as they can to get as much data without having to worry about damaging the stage too much, since it's already been faded not to fly again. And even after they are through testing the stage, some pieces of it might be recyclable and used again. Now for the first stage that was on the 25th flight of the Falcon 9, that launched TICOM 8 on May 27, 2016, it had a similar flight profile as the previous mission for JCSAT-14, and it's still in the recovery process, sailing towards port in the Atlantic. And once it's been recovered, SpaceX will determine how much damage it suffered, and if it will have the same fate as the previous mission, or if it could fly again. We will know more as SpaceX processes all four of these rocket stages to know what their eventual fates and continued work will be. And SpaceX hasn't achieved rocket reusability just yet until they fly one of those recovered first stages without any problems. So what do you think about this? Do you think that SpaceX will be able to relaunch the first stage that launched the CRS-8 mission? And what are your predictions on the first stage that launched TICOM-8? Do you think that it suffered the same amount of damage as the one that launched JCSAT-14? Or do you think that they might be able to reuse that one? Let us know what you think about all this in the comments section below and on any of our social media. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which helps us to grow and will help us to spread even more excitement about space. We're also all over the internet, and we would invite you to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and of course our website tomorrow.tv where you can join in the conversation and connect with us and fellow space enthusiasts. This is a crowdfunded show through Patreon and I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of the founders, architects, engineers, ambassadors, and dreamers of tomorrow whose continued support allows us to continue making these shows. So thank you so much to all of you guys who are contributing to this. And if you would like to support this show, please visit us on patreon.com slash spacepod where you can find more information. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know just a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.